whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm sorry that this video took to Thursday to make. Been busy, been tired, been working. Early morning shift, early bird shift. But whoa, the sum of the power in Los Angeles, California, <laughs> this past weekend for Dragon Ball Fighter Z, bruh. I, you know, E League. I like what E League is, so E League is one of my favorite events. Uh, watching it wise, uh, but I think this the sum of the power, like the summit house, like beyond the summit, what they did here. Dog, I, this is my favorite event. I know I'm a nobody yet in the FGC. I'm you know, like a small majority minority. Know me? I swear to God, I'm gonna do everything in my power to make sure. Even, I'll go as a player if I got to. God damn it! If I have to grind Dragon Ball Fighters and play it non-stop to uh, get the ability to be a player at this event, I'm going. Like, oh my God, bro! You know the event was so good when they had commercials that were fire like the, the 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 waiting music was fire like that playlist stupendous oh my god it was in los angeles california it was a four-day event players chilled did interviews and <sighs> that event was so godlike like we're gonna talk about the whole event i'm just i'm just reminiscing like that's probably my favorite event that's probably my favorite event that is my favorite event. Free, like free of charge. Like I, I like that event so much. I kind of like the more more than a tournament. Like I would get hype over more of some of the power than I would a tournament. Like, bruh, that event was too godlike. But uh, like I said, the power, uh, some of the power in you know, Los Angeles, California, it took place this weekend. There were some players like I voted in. There were some players who are guaranteed a spot, and I love everything they did to it. Uh, they raised money, so the more, more money that they raised, there was more things that they got to do. So they did like a uh, intro for an old like classic TV show. I forgot the name of the actual show, but it was pretty spot on. Like they had it synchronized with the other show at the beginning. God like they had a cereal debate, and Apology Man warms up his milk and cereal. It's kind of weird, super weird. It's one of those things where it's so weird. I don't want to know why I like it. You know what I mean? Like I don't want to know that. That's something that tastes good, so I'm never gonna warm up my cereal or anything like that. Um, like I said, what else did they do? They did Jenga. That was guy like you know, stage F commentary on that was fun, and that was a good match between uh, Reynolds and Chris G versus uh, Kazunoko and Goichi. That was such a good match too. Like it was back and forth, and it went all the way down to the wire. Oh, this, 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 yeah, this is my favorite. This is my. But let's let's start off with the singles and the, you know what I'm saying. There's two pools. Uh, there's two groups. So there's a group A, group B. Basically, I think you basically had to get three losses because like you could go over two in your group, and then that would determine like winner's side, loser's side. And hook gang god stayed on winner's side. Got the bracket reset it by uh, Sonic Fox, but took it. All in all, I feel like hook gang god was on fire this weekend he played the best this weekend and rightfully so and the craziest thing is people wanted to drop piccolo i, I thought he's gonna drop piccolo i remember saying verbatim in a video that like if hooking god dropped piccolo his t he would get that much better and i i knew he was top five like he was closing our range but let me, let me go ahead and shut up <laughs> away the key Hooking god play some piccolo dog i mean just just imagine if piccolo gets a buff i heard some crazy rumor that he's gonna get a nerf I don't believe that though. I think that was just people just talking crap so since the game of God won. But yeah, he he'll won uh, some of the power. More power to that man. Hook game, guys. It's just such a. It got a ring to it. He needs to come up with shirts or some merchandise or something. I think he got a little good following. And he's playing phenomenal. Like, he played phenomenal this weekend there. I want to say he. Yeah, he played the best. I mean, obviously, you know what I'm saying? There's, there's people who win tournaments, but like, they had to earn it. Like, I felt like Sonic Fox getting second place. I'm not saying he doesn't deserve second place. I'm not saying he can't get second place because it is fucking. It, it is. Excuse me. It is Sonic Fox. But I feel like a lot of the matches he had were like barn burners. Like he had to earn every single match where Hooking God was just on fire and it, it went his way. Except for the reset, obviously. But 
Yeah, so Sonic Fox took a second place. Ben Rich took, uh, oh, sorry if I'm saying it that way, that's how everybody said it when I was watching the, the Beyond the Sun, uh, yeah, Beyond the Sun event. So that's how I'm gonna say it. And then on top of that, too, like, Beyond the Summit, that was like mainly the only event I watched this weekend. Like I was heavily invested in that, and it, it felt like I was. You know, the dopest thing about Beyond the Summit is it felt like he was chilling with the homies, and it, it never felt like a tournament. It never had me had those nerves like a tournament. It never had me wanting to like. I want obviously I want to get be the best commentator that I could be and stuff like that. But it never had me uh, thinking. Uh, like it just it felt so relaxed it just felt like i was playing the game with the homies so it took me back so long and the event was dope but yeah fenrich the craziest thing about Fren fenrich was doza could have been in the spot easily doza had beaten one had won one more match and set and i combo breaker he would have never been in the same spot that uh fenrich is in he would have took fenrich's spot and we don't know how doza would have done and doza was an all goku team which i think he would have been fine but it's crazy how Fenrich finishes ties seventh, has to play a, like a buy-in game, gets in and does well. And I, like he had a good day at the office too. But him and Hook and God had a really good days. And Fenrich uh, lost, yeah, yeah, lost to Hook and God, and then he just kind of lost a tough set to uh, Sonic Fox, which is unfortunate. But he, he's, he's, he, he's definitely a, a guy you got to record with. I definitely think he wants people over, and I think. He's, he's going to be tough to deal with in the near future. Uh, Goichi, I, I I don't know. I just feel like Goichi, obviously he's top two, obviously. But maybe he just got burnt out towards the end, but he still had a great day at the office. This is the lowest he's ever finished, too, I think. So the fact that he got fourth and that's the lowest he ever finished, still a good day at the office, if you ask me. And I'll, I want to say tournaments that Sonic Fox and Goichi have entered, I don't think... Neither one of them have, like, not won the tournament. I don't think there's been another person that's won the tournament so far. I think. Off the top of my head. I'm, I'm talking, like, even tournaments is just where it's just Goichi and it's just Sonic Fox. Like, I don't know who's won a tournament. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But, uh, I don't know. Apology Man. Apology Man really looked well, too. And then the funny thing, too, is, like, he's the one uh, where I guess he made a complaint to... Uh, uh, arc system about Piccolo and they actually or Bandai Namco they actually nerfed Piccolo so and he's a Piccolo player and he's the one with the weird cereal taste where he warms it up. Kazunoko I think if Sonic Fox doesn't beat Kazunoko he could have won this weekend. He was playing it too. He oh my god he he was like a problem because like you know I'm a fan of Sonic Foxes. I I don't I don't think there's no reason to hide that. I'm a fan of a lot of these players. But, like, I was rooting for Sonic Fox. So, like, when he was playing Kazunoko, I was on the edge of my seat. I was nervous for Sonic Fox. But Kazunoko, oh, my God. It's weird, too, because it's like, you know, uh, Goichi, Goichi and Kazunoko, I think, are beasts in Street Fighter V. Uh, they're both solid players, and they both can play the game damn well. So are Moke. But, like, the fact that they're still scared, they're scarier in Dragon Ball, and, like, I'm like, I kind of want to, like, yo... <laughs> Just play Dragon Ball, not just play Dragon Ball, but make Dragon Ball your main priority because I think they both got top eights. I want combo breaker. I know, well, I obviously know what you did, but I'm saying I think Kazunoko did as well. Renault uh, took seventh and Moke took seventh as well. Uh, Lord Knight, uh, Left and Dogura and C uh, Cloud took ninth. Uh, Yoshi, uh, Yoshi, excuse me. Uh, Chris G, Nat Kill, and the Kill Sage took 13th as well. And I don't think anyone looked bad at all this weekend. I thought this weekend's events were pretty good and pretty guy like. And they actually managed to do my favorite event too. They actually managed to do the 3v3 tournament, which I think is super sick that there's a feature in Dragon Ball. They had to bootleg it by doing it online, but obviously they all were in the household, so I'm pretty sure the internet was just fine. But uh, Fenrich, Kazunoko, and Lauren Knight took it. And the teams were randomized too. Hook. And then second place was Hooking God, Apology Man, and Nakiel. And Nakiel even said it himself that he didn't like being on team with both pickles, but it actually worked out in their favor. Uh, third place was uh, Sonic Fox, Moke, Hell Pockets, and then Left Fin, Mr. Uh, Mr. Biscuits, and Reynolds was the third place as well. I thought the commentary was phenomenal. I loved it when the players got on the commentary. And I just, I love the interesting dynamic of having, you know, usually a four man team is kind of like a lot. 
because everybody's trying to get in a speech and stuff like that. But it was like real relaxed, and I just felt like they're, I felt like Beyond the Summit basically said, "Here's play, top players playing in the com- uh, Dragon Ball Fighters. Commentate how you want to commentate. If you want to crack a joke, crack a joke. If you want to get back to the action, get back to the action. But just just make sure it flows. And I I felt like it flowed. It never felt like it was too much this weekend. I thought Yikes did an amazing job, and I I. I I really inspire to be as good as Yikes. And, you know, I will never take, oh, you're trying to be too much like Yikes as a, as a insult. Because it's like, I feel like, if anything, that's just saying that you're trying to have fun. Like, Yikes has fun. You, you never hear Yipes commentate where he's not being himself. You know what I'm saying, and then that's that's the same thing with Chris Ma- uh, Matrix as well. I feel like their their dynamic is a, a one two punch, or actually a one one a one b punch. Like they're they're they are so good together that like it makes me watch NLBC, and you know, and most people like I'm not saying there's nothing bad with watching NLBC, but it's like it's like a local. It's like you know what I'm saying that's just practice. Even though that NLBC wins in their fights are the two top locals there is in the fighting game community, like. They're so good, it feels like a tournament. Like, it really does. And they're cracking jokes and they're interviewing the players and having a good time, too. And I know that Mr. Biscuits was a great commentator. Hell Pocket. Um, Ringe. Ringe did a great job, too. Ringe held it down. I thought Ringe was, Ringe was teaching me a lot. I would love to work with Ringe. I definitely think that's someone I could see myself working with as far as commentary goes. Uh, Sejan, when he was there, he, he did a phenomenal job. And he, you know what I'm saying? He literally left E League. So commentators from Street Fighter at the highest level too, and then went to Beyond the Summit and killed the thing. And then the nice little touch at the end where they added Tasty Steve. I didn't think Tasty Steve was gonna be there. The fact that he was there for Grand Finals, just like a nice little touch. And just to see, I would love to see. That's probably the set that I won't say the saddest part, but that's probably the most unfortunate part that uh, Sajin had Ely, and then I guess Tasty Steve has the real life thing. You gotta do real life priorities. He had a marriage or uh, whatever. So congrats to his friend or whatever. I would have loved to see that dynamic a little bit more than just Grand Finals, where you had Chris Matrix, uh, Tasty Steve, Sajam, and Yipes. I would have loved to see that for, And then Hell Pockets as well. I know Hell Pockets kind of got the short end stick, but he was still doing the damn thing. Like, I I aspire to be those guys. And I wish, and I'm like fortunate too, part is like L.I. Joe would have been there too. And L.I. Joe was like a, a voice, so... It would have been really dope to see Eli Joe and hear his voice with the other people talking at the same time. So, like, I, some of the power was too got like, like, and it, like, there's, I, I'm glad that I've been tagging them in my stuff when I practice my commentary and I've tagged the House of the Summon of Power because it's like there wasn't a Dragon Ball World Tour, so it's like you had to tag somebody. I'm gonna tag them in this. I'm gonna tag them in this. I'm gonna put a hashtag in this. I love the event. I love you. <laughs> Whoever's idea was this. Thank you. I need a shirt. I need I need the Smash GG one, the black one, and then I need the hood. Like the hood. I don't wear bright colors like that, but I need that. And then another thing, bro, is like, okay, so I I guess people chipped in, and that's obviously what created the uh, prize pool or whatever have you, uh, the players. But then they also got different stuff too. So they got a Genyu picture, but the pictures got like it actually had like little cell hats and Frieza hats and and. Trunks jackets, which I would wear, and it, like it's it dope that they did the Genyu Force picture, and they had all everybody in it. And I guess that was one of the challenges. Mafia was one of the challenges. Django, like I talked about earlier, uh, where it was uh, Goichi and Kazunoko versus uh, Chris G and Reynolds. That Jenga match was hype. It was a good match. And Mafia, bro, I, I've never known about Mafia, the video game. No, the, the game where you town, city, this and that. Town or mafia, excuse me. Never known about it. I don't think there's a way I could go over to my friend's house and play it. Like, cause, for one, I don't have a lot of friends like that. And two, I don't know if they want to play like that. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. I would play this game. After watching it, after watching it at the, the house, I would have played this game. Like, I really would. Like, that looked so fun. I would do it. <laughs> like they made a game I've never heard about look so interesting and so fun. Where I'm watching it, and it's late. It's late because one thing I didn't like about uh, some of the power, and I feel like a lot of West Coast things do it this way. 
I wish some stuff would start earlier. Just because it's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not on the East Coast, but I'm closer to the East Coast than the West Coast. So it's like, I got two hours in between. So like, it'd be just like 9, 10 on the West Coast. So it'd be 11, 12 a year. And I'm like, sleep trying to watch it. You know what I mean? That's the only thing I hate it. But like, oh, that was, that was so dope. Like, it, it's so dope. It's so dope. They had a mystery game tournament as well, and then Hook and God won that. Like I said before, Hook and God played on fire. Literally everything he played. And what else happened? Uh, the combo challenge. Combo challenge was literally the sickest thing I ever saw. I had no idea we was gonna see stuff that we just saw. Like the combos that they were pulling off, it, like it just blew my mind. I was just like, yo, I, what? <laughs> I think Fenrich ended up winning that. Yeah, I think his first ran, run, excuse me, let me correct myself, he did like seven perfect attacks in the combo, and then his last combo to win it all, he called Sinron and then finished the combo, like bro, I gotta get better, I, I, that's the one thing I hate about life sometimes, is like, you never know how good you are until you see it. so if my worldview is this, everything you see on the screen right now, I don't know how big the world really is until I, you know, step out the room. <laughs> like, as soon as I step out of the room, I'm in the house. Now I got this area to worry about, this area to worry about, this area to worry about. There's a lot of stuff to cover. So, I didn't know you could do seven perfect attacks in the combo. I know now. I didn't know that Cloud could do a jumping heavy and a, to a jumping heavy on the other side. Like, what, bro? <laughs> what? <laughs> like... Some of the combos that they were pulling off was, was amazing. And I, I was hyped for the combo challenge, but I think I'm, I'm going to see TLDs, like stuff we've seen, like optimal stuff. They were doing stuff that like just looked the dopest stuff. Ever. Like Sonic Fox even came in. He's like, my, my, <laughs> how does Sonic Fox say it? He's like, my combo's just OD. This is OD. Like, he came in and did a combo where Cell literally was like, so say the person's falling this way. Cell, like, Landed on this side and was able to go under each, underneath, like, float. Like, it was crazy, like, whoever thought, yo, we should have a combo challenge. Genius! Genius. That is effing genius. Bravo. Bravo. Like, like, the whole Summit of Power staff should get a race. Like, whoever, y'all killed it. Y'all killed it. And another good thing, too, about this weekend in Dragon Ball Fighter Z is a tournament, a world tournament was announced. And it starts at CEO. But see, the interesting thing about starting at CEO and a world tournament uh, being announced is it's through 2018 and through 2019. Now, this is just a thought I just had in my head. It's from 2018 to 2019. Maybe because like it's like halfway through the year already, so they want to start, like get to 2019. So I don't know if it's going to end like January, or I don't know when it's going to end. I don't know if it's going to be a full year. I don't know how many points are on the line. I don't know. I don't know anything of that. Right? But here's my thing, and here's, here's the most interesting thing, I think. We, they should, say for example, say you do, hmm. Or say, say if it goes to next year, right? Say there's 28 tournaments. 28 tournaments. I Like, the, the thought I've had is kind of make it like Marvel. Where Marvel had the Infinity Stones and each person gets an Infinity Stone. Do that with the Dragon Ball. Make it where it's only 8 spots available. And then like, the last one is like a last chance qualifier. But the other 7 people get a Dragon Ball. I think that would be a neat idea. And then obviously it's like called the Shinron grand final of the world tournament or something like that like i think you can make it so dope and so unique well i mean i guess it's not unique if uh, marvel already did it but you know what i'm saying you could just do something like that and you can make it fun too because i feel like dragon ball literally the i can't i couldn't tell you who i think everybody's a dragon ball community and i think that's what the summit the uh, power summit showed right because if you look at the, the Kill Sage, Marvel, if you look at, I don't know what Nakio played before, Chris G plays everything. Uh, I don't know what Yosh, Yohoshi played before, Cloud plays Marvel, Dogra plays Street Fighter, Left and uh, Smash, uh, or Melee, I don't I don't know which one he plays, so let me, let me be correct before I get killed. Lauren, I, I didn't know him before.
Moke, Street Fighter, Reynolds, didn't know him before. Kazunoko, Street Fighter, Paul G. Man, I think he played Marvel from what I've heard. Goichi, Marvel, Fenrich, I don't know. Sonic Fox, Netherrealm, like. And then, uh, Cooking God played. What did he play? He played something. I think he. I want to say Blaze Blue? He played something unique like that. I think he played Anime Fighter. I can't remember off the top of my head. I apologize though. I saw it. But you know what I'm saying? It's so many different communities bringing everybody together that DBZ doesn't have a community. It's this one big community. And I think that's what worked well about uh, the Summit of Power. I feel like that's what made it so unique and so dope is you had all these different communities together and you sh it, it showed all these different personalities. It showed how dope of an event it was. And like, I would love to see no, there's, I've seen some people on Twitter say like they want to see a Street Fighter 1 and some people say they don't. I would love to see a Street Fighter 1. The reason being is I think there's so many people you can get on the show that I feel like it would be good. And it, it just, it, I, got, I think it would be interesting just to have them in the household and just to have them out the comfort zone. Because one, there is a three, there's like a team mode on Street Fighter 5 that doesn't get used. I don't think it gets used in a tournament. You can have the Street Fighter 5 tournament and then you could have it like they had a combo breaker where it had a randomized game and you had to play somebody in the tournament that could be like your mystery tournament right there you can have them do street fighter five poses i guess or street fighter poses over time and stuff like that posters and things like that like you could make it fun i think tekken would be interesting as well and injustice injustice would be interesting as well because if you look at their events i think e-league was fine for injustice at least tekken was fine for uh e-league like i Want to see more out of Power Summit? Like, I think they, I think they've done five or six smashes, or Super Smash Bro, or yeah, yeah smashes. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. I'm sorry, <laughs> but yeah, I think they've done five or six. So I, I want to see more Dragon Ball, but I also want to see more events too. And uh, but I, I hope at the same time. Shoot, to be honest with you, do one every season, bro. <laughs> Like, not like every season as in every year. I'm talking like do one every season as in every season. You know what I'm saying? Because if the leaks are true, um, if the leaks are true, then season one of Dragon Ball DFC is done in July. And I don't know. I think season two starts right after that. And if season two is done in the fall, I would love to see a Summon of Power 2 in the fall or like in the spring or whatever. Like, you should have two, at least two a year. These are two guys like to not have two a year. I don't know how much it costs more financially, but their views were doing well the whole time. I think, I think they, at most, they had like forty thousand views, maybe. I know they had twenty pretty smoothly, but I was, I was also watching on my, I was watching on my Xbox TV app, so like, I wasn't really watching the chat like that. But I loved it. I loved everything about this video. I hope they do. And then actually, Arc System, like, I don't. To be honest with you, Arc System. And Bandai Namco, I don't even want like a Dragon Ball Fighters 2. I, I want you to add all the deal. If there's two seasons of DLCs, I want you to add every character that you can, and just make this one big Dragon Ball game. But then I would love to see you do like a, you know, I'm biased too. I would love to see my one My Hero Academia or like a One Piece. Like that's what I want to see. I want to see you tackle more enemies and get more people into the game and invest in it as, as well. Oh, but the last thing I was going to mention. I kind of skipped over it, went on a little tangent there, but I think this is the top 10 as far as going into CEO is a concern. This is my top 10. Everybody else can have a different top 10, this is my top 10. My video, my YouTube channel, my top 10. Uh, I think Leffen was at uh, number 10. I thought he played really well, I thought he played exceptionally. He actually, I think, beat Dokura, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, I saw Smash Players tweets, so maybe that's why. Okay. Cause uh, you know we, we ain't gotta talk about that. Uh, my number nine is Nakiel. I think he played well. Yeah, just I mean you know what I'm saying you're playing against the top twenty or so players in the world, and these are the best players like at, at a tournament. Like the only player I could you know Kiz okay I think should have been there. That would have been neat to see him there. I think it would have been neat to see Super Noon. Uh, maybe uh, drawing a blink on other players, but if it comes back to me, I might mention them later. But yeah, there's only like a handful of players. Like I, I think every player that was able to be voted for probably should have been there. But that's probably the top. 
that's probably the best players in the world. So that's, I can guarantee that more than likely will be the people who's eligible for whatever this Dragon Ball World Tour will have. Just spend, unless they do my idea where they have eight or like the seven because of Shinron and Dragon Ball. Uh, Moke is eight. Fred Rich is seven. I was going to put them higher, but I feel like that would be kind of disrespectful just to other people who's kind of been placing well. I think Fred Rich is on notice now. You can't, like, there's no shocking you that Fred Rich does well. Like, he played some damn good Dragon Ball, and I think he will continue to play damn good Dragon Ball. And if he goes to CEO, I he will, he will play some more good Dragon Ball. I know more good, yo, but we're going to rock with it. You're already 25 minutes in, you're probably not even watching it to this point. Uh, Chris G is six for me. I wanted to put him in the top five, but then I was looking at the other players I had had. I've had, I have in my top five, and I felt like just off of performance alone, Chris G's, I deserve the top ten spot regardless. Probably deserve the top five spot, but arguably you could have these five players ahead of them. And the only reason why I say ahead of them is because look, I look at Dogra. It was, although Dogura did play bad, I think he just came back from, like, he went from Atlanta, like, traveled from Japan to Atlanta. I feel like he's been doing nothing but back and forth traveling, because then he had to go to California, and, like, the time zones and stuff like that. Gets you, like, he played a lot, but then those last couple weeks, he's been playing a lot. So, uh, hopefully, you know, there's nothing going on, no major tournaments. So, I, I'm Dogura. I'm getting a day, a week's worth of rest this week. Uh, Kazunoko. Like I said, I really think he could have been in Grand Finals if, Sonic, if he beat Sun Fox. I truly believe that he's playing that good. Hook Gang Guy is number three. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to disrespect the other two. Like you can't disrespect the other two. Just, just not yet. Hook Gang Guy is right there. And the, the craziest thing about Hook Gang Guy too, being right there as like third best player in the world right now, is he plays Sonic Fox weekly. You have to understand. Right? So. If Sonic Fox shows up to NLBC, the thing that Yipes and Chris Matrix commentate and put their heart and soul on and kill, right? He gets two opportunities to play. He gets two opportunities to play Sonic Fox. You know what I mean? Say winners final or grand finals. And the kill stage is usually there. You know what I'm saying? They're like those three right there are probably all good training partners and they probably play each other a lot. And they're all damn good at the game. So Hooking God is already gonna get better because Sonic Fox is one of the top two players in the world and you're just gonna get that rub the more you play him. The more you play him, you're not gonna be worried about someone that's just constantly super dashing it. You know what I mean? Just little things like that. Now, here's the interesting thing. You know what I'm saying? I, I feel like my 10 through three, everybody be like, yeah, I, I probably agree with that. Maybe move a couple people here and there, maybe add someone, maybe take someone off. You know what I'm saying? They probably agree with that list. Here's one again. Interesting where it might be half and half. And like I said, I do like Sonic Fox. I do like Oishi. So out of no means of this disrespect. I feel like as of right now, Goichi's number two. And the only reason why I say that is because Sonic Fox did beat him this past weekend. He did beat him at Combo Breaker. I feel like Sonic Fox's team has helped him make the difference. Now, do I think uh, it's weird too, because I feel like Sonic Fox was the only person I think to still beat Goichi in the tournament. Honestly, I don't think anyone else has beat him in the tournament. I, I don't count this as a tournament. I count this as like a bet, like an E League. You know what I'm saying? But I think Sonic Fox is the only person to beat him. And I think in like a three set, like first to three, uh, Sonic Fox gets Goichi. No, first to 10, where it's time to develop a game plan and understand what Sonic Fox is really trying to do. And blocking wise, I think Goichi could beat Sonic Fox. Obviously, we've seen that before. We've seen that twice, actually. But uh, that was early in the game. That was Sonic Fox had a different team. You got a, I think he got a better team now. But it also depends on two, because a uh, factor that nobody's really bringing up is I don't think we saw any Samasus or Fujitos at... Uh, some of the power, but we could see one of CEO. And Sonic Fox has been developing as a monster, and so is Guichi. So they can switch up the teams if they really wanted to. But, like I said, in the first attempt set, I, I think it's safe to bet on Goichi. I still, it's like it's, when I say one to two, it's really, it's pretty much one A, one B. 
like it, it just depends on the day. It depends on who's playing that good. It, it depends if Sonic Fox's team is OD. Like my team is OD, bro. Like it just depends, right? So yeah, Sonic Fox is my number one player right now in Dragon Ball Fighters. Uh, I think the tournament the tournament starts at CEO, so that's my top ten right there. And hot take here at CEO, I really truly believe either Sonic Fox, Goichi, or Hook Gang God are going to win. And the only reason why I say those three, I'm willing to take those three over the field. Now, that's arguably easy because, I mean, as long as they don't have no rough patches and depends on who's on their side in the tournaments, if they go all the way to winners, you know what I'm saying? They're, at the very least, if they go 0 and 2 in the top eight, uh, two of them will finish top fifth. But I still truly, truly believe that one of these guys will take it. Cause I mean, like even Kazuno, Goldogra, Chris G, Fairn Red, Smokey, and that kill, Eleven, they're all, all seven of them are great players, but I, I just don't see that field being that strong enough to beat those three. I feel like those three are playing damn good. Now, Hook Gang got caught up to them, so it just depends on who's the next person. It just really depends. Like I said, that was Beyond the Summit. House, Summit of Power, Los Angeles, California. I wasn't at this one, unfortunately, but I'm I'm leveling up the commentary. Leveling up the commentary, leveling up the Dragon Ball Z play. I might go stream that right now as we speak. But your boy is going to be at the next Summit of Power. Mark my words. So I'm going to be on the Summit. You did a great job. I'm proud of you. Uh, I love it. I love everything about it. I love everything about it. So until next time, peace.